Your recent speech at the Oxford Union went viral online. Millions of people watched you make the argument for British reparations to India, for a British apology to India for its colonial rule there. Uh, let's have a watch. The ability to acknowledge a wrong that has been done, to simply say sorry, will go a far, far, far longer way than some percentage of GDP in, 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 form, in the form of, of, of aid. Powerful words there by you, uh, which won the day in that debate. Don't you worry, though, that one day, in the years to come, an independent Kashmir may ask India for similar reparations and a similar apology based on the same line of argument you advanced there, based on the fact that the Indian government, the Indian armed forces, wreaked violence, havoc, destruction in Jammu and Kashmir in recent decades? I think purely on, on the specific economic argument that I've talked about how the, the British depredations deprived India economically, I think you will find that the contribution of the rest of India to the state of Kashmir economically vastly, vastly outstrips uh, any, 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 anything else. So the economic argument for reparations would never apply. Secondly, as far as the wrongs that have been committed in Kashmir, Indians have been the first to acknowledge them, to take action. As a democracy, we have tried Human soldiers. Human rights groups we do not agree with you those at all on that. Amnesty publishes report after report saying Based soldiers in, in India rights, no. have impunity in Kashmir. Impunity there have been the court martials, jailings, convictions. Military trials, no civilian trials of soldiers or police officers. No, there, there have been civilian trials, trials of police officers, absolutely. Yeah. There are policemen in jail today. To Amnesty International says, to date, not a single member of the security forces deployed in Jammu and Kashmir over the past 25 years has been tried for human rights violation in a civilian court. Well, they, June have, of they, this year. Ha they have been court martialed, but it depends on how they define security forces. The police, who are the Jammu and Kashmir police, when they've been guilty of atrocities, they have been tried. Well, how do we know about atrocities? More than 96% of all complaints brought against the army in Indian-administered Kashmir have been dismissed as false and baseless by the army. How convenient. Well, I, I, you know, the fact is that some of these complaints are probably indeed baseless. But the fact is that the, those complaints that had a basis have been taken up and so when, taken. So when people say there have been hundreds of cases of torture and deaths, thousands of cases of sexual assault, you're saying all of the soldiers and police officers involved in that have been prosecuted? Well, I don't know that they've all been prosecuted. They well, have you, been you exemplary were in prosecuted. Government. You were external I affairs minister. That. But when you were in government, what did your government, what did you do to hold Indian Armed Forces to account for the violence and chaos in Jammu and Kashmir? I have informally had contacts with the Home Ministry about some of the concerns that were brought to me by human rights groups that I've been in touch with. But the fact is that this was not within my area of responsibility, and I cannot interfere in the work of other government departments. No minister can in any democratic system. You talk about interference. Uh, when people say to you or any Indian politician, why not have a brokered peace deal? in Kashmir between Pakistan and India? Why not let outsiders, the UN, the US, the EU, the good old Norwegians, come along and try and broker a peace deal to this seemingly never-ending conflict? You all say we don't want any outside interference. That's right. Why? Well, for, first of all, I don't think we have any problem understanding each other, the Pakistanis and us. We don't need a third party to have a problem to meeting each other. Well, as far as we're concerned, uh, if, if terrorism were to stop, we can talk about everything. Don't forget there have been talks about Kashmir as recently as during the governments of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and General Musharraf but in Pakistan. given 68 years later your two countries still can't sort this problem out on their own, why not have outside involvement? You because clearly are not able to do it on your because own. Because the fundamental problem in the India nuclear powers. The fundamental problem in the India-Pakistan relationship is not Kashmir. It is the nature of the Pakistani you think state. It's not, you think it's not Kashmir. Yeah, well, they, say, they say it is Kashmir. Well, so why should I do something I don't believe in? I'm telling you it's not Kashmir. I'm telling you it's got to do... So how does this end? How it, does this end, Shashi? It only, it? it only ends when Pakistan stops being the kind of state it is where the military, to justify its disproportionate share of its own country's assets, budget and GDP, foments hostility on both sides of its borders, both in India and in Afghanistan, to justify its disproportionate Hold on, we just resources. talked about the Indian Army's fermenting of hostilities. How many, how many people, innocent people, have been killed in Kashmir and framed Look, as militants? Look, unfortunately, many these tragedies have occurred because the Indian security forces have been deployed to protect against terrorism and militancy Shashi, coming from the Pakistan. you know side. and I know, in the 1980s, you were a UN diplomat, you weren't an Indian politician, you knew very well that the reason the Indian Armed Forces went into Kashmir was because of fraud in elections, because of people objecting to rule from Delhi and about election results. Being, it didn't start with terrorism. But the terrorism came very soon after those disputed elections, and when it came, 
the security forces come in. Look, these are young people who are fearing for their lives. But the rest they of the world is seeing two excessive. nuclear powers on the brink. Shouldn't we all be worried? I hope not, because so far, despite so many flashpoints, it has never come to that. Uh, the Pakistanis seem to prefer a strategy, to use one of their own expressions, of uh, bleeding India to death by a thousand cuts. And India, in turn, has uh, managed a strategy of resisting terror without resorting to war. But it has not been a happy situation, but I think, for anyone Many would say you've been involved. bleeding Kashmir with more than cuts. I wouldn't say that because I've been to Kashmir multiple times. I was married to a Kashmiri. My late wife was, was from a village which uh, had been, in fact, attacked by terrorists. She lost her childhood home because of terrorist attacks. So uh, there have been the, the, the stories are far more complex than your questioning implies, Melly.